Today we have as our guest someone who I'm very proud to know. He came in second place when he was arm wrestling Jeff Cavins on international global television network EWTN. I can also say that I also have that great honor of having lost to Jeff Cavins in an arm wrestling tournament that will soon be aired on EWTN. So we're looking forward to talking with our guest, 30-year policeman. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We have a really cool guest with us today. He's, he's someone I met uh, with uh, Jeff Cavins. He's a longtime friend. They kind of ride together in a pack and uh, got to spend a little bit of time riding with him in uh, Michigan earlier this year. This guy's a real diehard biker, 30-year member of the police force, strong Catholic, and probably the best barbecue you will ever meet. We've got Sean Lynn as our guest today. I want to let you guys know, remember that uh, before Jesus came, there was the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the paths of the Lord. Before Jesus came, the spirit of Elijah had to fall on John the Baptist, and he went out into the wilderness proclaiming, repent, 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 roaring, repent, uh, prepare the way for the Lord. You know what we need today? We need, if Jesus is coming soon, don't we need the spirit of Elijah to fall on us again? Don't we need to hear the roar of, of, of manly voices saying, uh, give your life to Jesus, walk the straight path? Understand your Catholic catechism and and live a life of virtue. We need some roaring sounds out in the wilderness of men's voices. There's nothing louder, though, in the wilderness than the sounds of a motorcycle engine when you're riding in a pack. And today we have as our guest someone who's a real gnarly biker. One day I may ride with him, but uh, I know whatever whatever these guys do when they ride, they ride for hundreds and hundreds of, you know riding 500 miles in a day is hard is almost impossible it's exhausting they do longer leaps than that we have with us sean lynn a member of the uh, uh, he's in canada i don't know what town he's in i think it's calgary calgary alberta sean lynn welcome to the bear wozniak adventure thanks for having me bear i'm Proud so happy even though you don't speak english properly I, I think you got that wrong. We invented it. Oh, here. you in, you invented it up there. You're in Calgary. I've always wanted to go there. One of these days, I'm going to make it up there. It is one of the most beautiful places in the world with the mountains just an hour away. And uh, that's what I tell my kids and the kids I work with is that Canada is one of the top places in the world to live and Calgary is one of the top places in Canada to live. So, well, when you say top places, do you mean higher higher up on the map? Top no, of the I map? No, I mean like in all the studies or where people want to live for different reasons, Calgary is one of the top places in the world to live. I, I've always wanted to go there. I mean, you, the Calgary, you got cowboys there, man. You got the Calgary Stampede there. And, and, yes. uh, and so Free one of these days, on one of these days, I'm going to come up though and, and, Hopefully, do one of your men's conferences. Uh, I'm begging you to. Probably gonna want to come in the in the summer because you're you're uh, <laughs> might get a little cold here. In the winter. Well, listen, what weekend does the summer usually fall on? Uh, it depends. We get we've. I'm pretty sure we've had snow every month of the year, so it, it could happen anytime. Does the summer last like what 72 hours, or how long does it actually last? Summer. No, it, it, that's where it's, it's our weather. Uh, they say wait five minutes and uh, it'll change. And a week and a half ago, it was minus 40 with the wind chill, which is very cold. And oh, I don't know. That's 40 degrees isn't that cold. Minus 40. Your, your thermometer was broken. No, There's no, no way. Minus 40 degrees. Yeah. No and wonder then, everybody says it's a top place to live. That's wonderful. And then... We get a Chinook, and it's like plus 10, 12 Celsius. Oh, it's balmy and and uh, yeah, that's in the surfing right weather. In the mid fifties. Well, you must be in the tropical part of Canada then. 
Oh, yeah, it, it comes and goes. Well, now, during, during that 72 hours of summer, do your igloos melt or what happens? No, no, no igloos. I think you have to go further north for that. Uh, oh, huh. So. But we love Sean Lynn. I, I met Sean Lynn in uh, Dallas at the CMLA, the Conference Men's Leadership Alliance uh, meeting there. And we had a cigar, I think, the first night we met, sat around and had a cigar. And when he said his ministry, he has a barbecue ministry, I thought, i got to get to know this guy. And then I understand he's... 30-year uh, member of the police force up there in Calgary. and uh, But what was really cool, then we met, we bumped into each other again in Michigan. How many, tell, tell us just about that ride. How many guys are in your pack and where did you leave from? And every day of that ride, it's it's amazing how far you guys ride, how well, long it, you ride. It, it ebbs and flows, but we've got a core of five or six guys that, that ride, Jeff being one of them. And how, and how, many, how many years have you been riding together? This year coming up will be our fifth ride so it it's it's funny how it started it i was on a, my bucket list trip with my wife for our 30th anniversary we went to israel with jeff cavins and jeff and i got talking about motorcycles and he goes i'd like to go to mile zero of the alaska highway and i'd never been on a major motorcycle ride so i said sure let's make it happen and uh, the next summer, I've organized the ride, and I've got our barbecue trailer going at a couple of our stops to to reach out to people. That and it just everybody loved it. Jeff loved it, so it, it's become an annual thing. Uh, we now have the bishop for the military of Canada, Bishop Scott McCaig, on our on our crew. He's riding with us. Uh, we've got a longtime rider, Father Marius who's a Polish priest in our diocese that's a hardcore rider. So this past summer, the first day, I did 1,207 miles from Calgary. Hey, hey listen, Seattle. we're not talking about, no, not not kilometers. We're talking about miles. How many actual miles? That's miles. 1,207 1, miles. How so many iron? 1,800 kilometers. So it, there's such a thing for those who aren't bikers called an iron butt. How many iron butts have you done? Well, that was my first official. I, I still have to do the, the paperwork, but I'm working it out with St. Joseph. Do I need a patch? To yes, you do. <laughs> because I, I don't believe you. An iron butt is when you go 1,000 miles in a single day, and there's rules for it, right? What are the rules yeah. to actually get an official? Sean, I want, you to, I want to see that patch, dude. I want to see that patch on you. Got to okay. do it. So tell me. I will, tell me. I'll work on uh, finishing the paperwork this week then. I really want to see that patch. I think it's one of the cool. It's, I'm telling you, I think the longest I've ever, I've never ridden more than 600 miles in a day. And that's, of course, I was in excruciating heat. Uh, but I mean, that's tough to do. People don't realize how hard it is to ride a motorcycle. The alertness it takes, uh, when you're going into the wind like that, you're being buffeted all the time. And when you travel that many miles, you're going through different types of weather. What what are the rules to actually do a, a to get a thousand mile patch? You, you you have to have a starting point where you take a picture of your gas receipt and your mileage. You have somebody sign off as a witness that you're leaving, and then you have to collect your gas receipts at every stop uh, and your mileage. And then at the end, you have to have a witness there to sign off uh, on it. So you left you left Calgary and wh and where did you go on this twelve hundred seven mile day so one? I, the, the first day was uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So I went through Saskatchewan, down through North Dakota, all the way to South C Dakota. So, and that's twelve hundred seven miles. Yeah. So you went you went down from Canada and where did where did you go through in no through North Dakota? Uh, Minot, Fargo. Uh, then headed straight south from Fargo. Well, people don't know this, but uh, I was actually born in uh, Powers Lake, North Dakota. When I left, I, as, a, as a young kid, the IQ of North Dakota went up about 20 points. True, the average. But uh, no, I was born in Powers Lake, and uh, as a kid, I lived there, I think, two years, and then moved to California. Then I came back for two more years, like when I think I was in fifth, I may mean, know, like, third and fourth grade or second and third grade or something like that. Then I went back to California where I was raised. But yeah, I always have wanted to go back to the Dakotas and ride across there on my bike too. One of these days, do you guys have a name for your pack? Well, 
we name it after our our ministry, God Squad. So it so is the God Squad. God Squad Riders. Hey, okay, do me a favor. Send me a picture of you guys, because we're uh, we want to put you. We want to put you in the credits of our of our new TV of the season three of Long Ride Home. We want to put the God Squad picture there. Can you do that for me soon? Because we're we're doing the credits right now, man. I can do that. Awesome. I want a picture of you. Lots of them. We'll try to get a good picture of Jeff Cavins, you know, try to get him from the back. Well, that, yeah, that's hard to do. So. Just stand in, can you, do you ever get to stand in front of the camera when there's a picture? You could block out Jeff Cavins pretty easily. Yeah, that wouldn't be too hard. So. <laughs> but we're going to, we're talking with, with Sean Lynn. He's a man's man. He's a biker who's just in love with Jesus. He has a, uh, the God Squad is is their ministry. This this the, and the ministry really is barbecue ministry. He has he's a great barbecue. He throws it. He he sometimes pulls that an escort truck. They ride their motorcycle and they pop open that that uh, barbecue and they invite people to join them. And it's just a great way to fellowship and get to know people. It's it's doing ministry. I think the way the most natural possible way, which is just to be. Uh, open and uh, available and friendly and and have a conversation with people. Let them know well, there's there's good news. It's also showing men in service to to others, like like Saint Joseph was to the Holy Family. And it, we've been we're coming up on our 23rd annual men's conference, and and it's uh, about 10 years ago. We were joking because I was competing in in state championship barbecue competitions and. We thought, what better way to reach out to men than have barbecue? And one of my donors threw me a check, and I took that as a sign that it was time to do it. And we've been, we do youth jail events, we've done parish events, we've done high school events. So, barbecue, barbecue ministry. We're talking with with uh, Sean Lind. He's a member of the God Squad. We'll be right back. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. At Deep Adventure Ministries, we believe that the most radical thing you can do in life is to abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. I'm, you know, this yesterday my son came over. We were surfing together. His name is Jeremiah. Uh, he surfed uh, in Hawaii uh, December 7th, I think it was 2007, 85 foot waves. When you get towed into a huge wave like that, you have to be towed in. You can't paddle in, and you let go of that tow rope and let the jet ski run. When you drop into that wave, an 85-foot face, and you ride it for over a mile just to get out of the wave, um, you've abandoned yourself to that wave. It's a wild adventure. Abandoning yourself to God's will is so much more than that. God has a, a will for your life, and, it's, and, and He wants you to be happy. It's a beautiful beautiful um, life that he has for you, one of, of overcoming challenges, one of, of experiencing intimacy with him, one of serving him. But when you abandon yourself to God's will, you get to see God work. When you're in the middle of that, you, you, if you're sitting on the beach, you don't really get to experience what it is to ride away. But when you paddle out and you pray 
and you drop into God's will, you get to experience the power of the Lord moving in your life on a day-to-day basis. So we ex- ex- encourage you to go to our website, deepadventure.com, our webmaster, Kickstart Media, and our social media company, Fuzadi. They go, we don't know what to do, brother. You got too much going on on your website. How are we going to pack it all into one website? So go there and find out all the cool stuff we have going on to Deep Adventure Ministries. We, is that, we have as our guest today someone that I just instantly met him i said i want this i want to know this guy i want to ride with this guy i want to i want him to be a good friend of mine sean lynn is with us he's a biker he's 30 years on the police force in calgary montana their ministry is called uh, the god squad and he, one of the one of their ministries is, is barbecuing for jesus so sean lynn welcome back to the show thanks bear and it's calgary alberta calgary montana alberta Chicago. what did i say calgary montana yeah. Well, you know why? Cold. It's right above Montana. It's right near Montana. That's right. And That's I used to have right. a cabin, right? I had a cabin, believe it or not, I had a cabin less than three miles from Canada uh, by uh, the west side of Glacier Park. Oh, yeah. That's on beautiful. The, the north fork that, of the Flathead River on the west talk, side. Talk about a place to ride going over top there. Oh, the going there on our first ride. You've done going to the Sun Road? Yes. Oh, I, I want to film there one of these. The next place I film is probably going to be going to the Sun Road in Montana. And that's sketchy because a lot of times it's only open for about two months of the year, or maybe three at the most, right? Because you're going yep. up to the glaciers. Yep. So, and it's, uh, it's fun. And then there's one going around that I took. Uh, I was going to play golf down that way. And I had to ride just because I wanted to ride. But it was it was down at freezing, so fu- it was snowing in Calgary when I left, and it was uh, like 32 Fahrenheit for m- most of the trip. So it was uh, it was a uh, five hours of fun on my bike. Well, what kind of motorcycle are you riding these days? I ride a Victory Vision. Jeff- oh yeah, you ride a Victory, don't you? Yeah, Jeff's very jealous. He he talks. He's about talking it about when he stop. when he first to Jeff, he's referring to Jeff Cavins. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and he he tried his jealousy comes through as he attempts to mock it at every stop we make. And but I know it's a deep seated. I wish I had a victory. From well, Jeff you know what? Uh, one of our riders, uh, Grady Dyke, rides a rides a victory. But you have probably the coolest bike in the world there in Calgary, don't you? Is it still there? Well, yeah. You know Actually, what? I'm, what am I? What am I talking about? Tell them what I'm talking about. Talking about the. Orange County Chopper, Pope John Paul II motorcycle. This thing is absolutely beautiful. Wait, wait, wait. So how did this motorcycle come to be? It was uh, it was commissioned by a man out of New Jersey who wanted to use it for evangelization. And then the, uh, my understanding is he passed on and it was offered to Jeff and uh, Jeff Gavins. And Father Marius, who rides with us, is an extremely avid motorcycle rider and he's Polish absolutely loves Pope John. Paul oh III. yeah. And so I show, I say, Jeff, show me the picture of the bike. So he shows father Marius this picture on our second ride and father Marius is him and I room together on our ride. And he's walking around our hotel room going, I gotta have that bike. I gotta have that bike. And Jeff felt the Holy spirit saying that, Father Marius needed to have access to that bike. So Father Marius is the proud owner. The only problem is Canada has some stupid import rules and we're with a police officer and a and a Catholic priest. Kind of important that we follow the rules. And we yeah, I guess so. You don't want to go to purgatory yeah. for over a motorcycle, you know. Yeah, we're Canadian so purgatory. We had it up here for a year to do some evangelization with it and then they said we had to Bring it back to the Why well, bring it bring it down here? Bring it to Hawaii. We can take it's, care of it here. In, it's on Montana right now, and I'm sure Father Mary's Montana. Here. Where in Montana? It's in uh, uh, Whitefish area. Whitefish. So. That's where my cabin is. My I could be there if I had my cabin there still. I could be there. And, and of course, Whitefish, Montana, is about 25 miles away from my cabin. But you got to go all the way down the ridge line and then all the way down. So it's probably a 90 minute drive to get there. If you could just yeah, go over you, the mountains, it would be were, close. Uh, were you east of Columbia Falls then? The I was directly north of Columbia Falls on the east side of that Whitefish Range. I was oh, actually okay. two miles from the, the Flathead River, which is makes the western border for Glacier Park. Yeah, okay. 
What a really cool privilege. I, you know, I went up there. I thought, I'm going to build myself a cabin. I need to, after my busy tax season as a CPA, I'm going to go up to Montana. I'm going to try to build myself a little hunter's cabin, like maybe a 15, 12 by 20 foot cabin. I had no idea how mentally taxing that would be on my mind. And also, think about it. I had to pull start a generator every time I wanted to use a power tool because there's no power within 25, well, probably 20 miles of the cabin. There's one oh, place wow. that has power. You know, a little, there's a little place, a general store and a, and a little, I don't know what you would call it. It's a log cabin that you go to, to eat and they serve like two different meals each day. Like might be a pot pie or pizza or always great, always uh, great apple pies and stuff. We're talking with Sean Lynn. He's a, he's someone I met uh, in Dallas at the CMLA event and then met with him in Michigan. So you were telling us about your, your 12, your, your ride this summer. Uh, you went from Calgary down to Sioux Falls, twelve hundred seven miles in one day, and then what? What was your the, you you when you guys were in Sioux Falls? When did you when did you guys? Where did you guys? Where did you guys meet up? Where you had that encounter? I think with the 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 bachelorette party, and you guys. Oh, that was actually our first ride. Okay, the, the, that was in Canmore, just outside of Calgary. Here we were thinking we're taking a night off from evangelization, just a fellowship, and we go yeah. out for supper and. And uh, God was calling us to to be aw situationally aware of what's going on and people needing to to hear God's message because it was funny. There was five of us around the table at that time for supper, and we had calculated, I think it was like 188 years of faithful marriage. Yeah. And, and uh, there was a retired fireman and firemen and policemen we always like to uh, bet against each other and he's going oh no these are girls just out hiking having a nice dinner i'm saying no no it's a it's a bachelorette party and so i go over and ask and sure enough i'm right and uh, and we get talking to these girls and we ask i asked the bride if she's marrying a guy that we've got 188 years of of marriage at that table. Are you married? Well, what guy? you said was 188 years of fidelity in marriage. Yeah, faithful marriage. Yeah. And uh, the girls just ate it up and they're wanting to have pictures with us and everything. It's so else. cool because you think all oh, these guys are going to come over and hit on us. And it was so the opposite, you know, and encouraging yeah. her to marry someone who and have a, a long sustained marriage, you know, it's so cool. And what was interesting was one of the guys that noticed a woman watching this whole encounter kind of looking lonely and Jeff was prompted to go over and talk to her and share with her some encouragement and and then we're outside and there's a guy looking at our bikes and we're explaining what we're going to do and what we're doing and we said we'll pray for you and he breaks down crying because of he's just at his son's wedding and building relationships new relationships with his son that have been severed in the past and just we spent 15 many minutes 20 minutes ministering to him outside just because he was looking at our bikes you know bikes uh is he a biker by the way i i don't recall it's just interesting. i've had so many encounters riding my motorcycle that opens to ministry people looking at the bike or maybe they're a biker themselves there's an instant bond that your brother if you're a biker, you're brothers with all the other bikers automatically because they know they know what it takes to ride a motorcycle and the danger involved too. And it's just so often, I, I, I can't count the number of encounters I've had like that where I've had a chance to say, I'll pray with you or pray with them or, or share the gospel. You see that on our TV show, Long Ride Home. You know, you can see what happens to us when we're riding and we have these, encou we have these encounters. We were riding um, across the desert in, uh, t in Texas. And we were kind of doing my bicycle ride in reverse. I bicycled from San Diego, California to Jacksonville, Florida. In season one, we were doing our motorcycles the reverse. So I'm on a lookout to see if I find someone who's on a, uh, you can, who's on an ex a long range motor, uh, bicycle pedaling ride. And we get east of, uh, west of San Antonio. And I see this guy bicycling and you can see you're out in the middle of the desert, so far away from everything, you know, you're on a long trek because there's just nothing for a hundred miles. And he said, yeah, I left Houston a week ago and I'm, I'm, I'm heading to, uh, heading to San Diego. And when we jumped off our motorcycles, by the way, we ran over to talk to him. 
he must have freaked out because all these bikers pull off and just run over to him. Actually, we ran over to him and then passed him into the weeds to go to the bathroom first. But then we talked to him and he had just had a breakup with a girl, you know. And we encouraged him and prayed for him. Father Mark Goring was there. We prayed for him. And then a week later, Sean, I bumped into him again. We had gone down to the Big Bend, and now we were heading further west, and we saw him again. I was thinking, you know what? I bet I see, I bet I see him soon. And within 10 minutes of my thinking that there he was again, we pulled over again, and he said, you know what? After I bumped into you guys, I stopped at every little town and went into the chapel and spent time with the Eucharist. We didn't even know he was a Catholic. So that's what you've experienced, too. We're talking to Sean Lynn. We'll be right back. His ministry with the God Squad is a barbecue motorcycle ministry. I don't know how you would. It's it, What it is, it's Sean Lynn ministry. And it's just the way he, who he is and God using his who he is as a person to reach others. We'll be right back with the Bear Wastick adventure. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak adventure. We got to thank you people that uh, go to patreon.com forward slash bear Wozniak deep adventure you can give at you can give a dollar a month or five or ten but if you give twenty dollars a month or more you become a member of the bear claw club and what that means is you get all of our radio shows usually months early before they even air on ewtn and you get the video version of it so you can see what my guest sean lynn looks like uh but also all of our patreon donors last week they just received uh the 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 first episode of the next season of long ride home our tv show our motorcycle tv show uh they're they get they're getting it probably nine months before it airs on the tv network so you get the director's cut too you don't you don't uh because sometimes ewtn says uh we don't want that that's too funny or that's too edgy you get the actual director's cut so if you go to patreon.com forward slash bear was deep adventure you know ewtn provides about well they don't private provide anything for us for the radio show no funding for that and maybe about a fourth to a third of the funding for the TV show. And uh, and we know we do our open, uh, our every morning Ocean Sunrise Catechism on Facebook. And so the difference has to be made up by people like you that that uh, believe in our ministry and want to be part of it. So go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. Sean Lynn is someone that I love the minute I met him. And it's not just because we both, Sean, we got to, I want to hear more about your testimony, but we got to wrap this up. This this ride, so far we've only got just first day. Give us the rest of that ride that when I bumped into you, you and Jeff Cavins uh, in, Lan- in Lansing, Michigan this year, you went, from, you went from Calgary to Sioux Falls, and then what was the rest of your trek? Des Moines, Iowa, and then we went to South Bend, Indiana the next day. Uh, we stopped at uh, a convent before we landed in Lansing. Did they the- run for their lives when they saw you guys ride up? No, we they were expecting us, uh, luckily, but uh, it was it was quite the encounter. When you say expecting us, they had advance warning they, that these they bikers were coming. <laughs> not not a lot, uh, as the one sister said. We were expecting somebody today, and God sent you us instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, it was it was incredible experience to be prayed. Prayed over by these nuns. Wow! Encouraged, and then, then landed at the Knights on Bikes rally where we did that day ride together. To yeah, we, where did we go? Yeah, we went to Hell and back. Hell and back. That it's, there's a town called Hell in in Michigan, and we rode there and came back. So, and then we split our ways. We went to uh, Mississauga, Ontario. Spoke at a parish there, uh, and then we went on to Montreal stopping to have lunch with Father Raymond D'Souza, who's a well-known oh. Catholic uh, writer and r- good friend of mine, and Saint landed at St. Joseph's Oratory in Montreal, which is the mecca for men who love St. Joseph. Like, it's, it's incredible to be there. And we went and saw the, the resting place of St. Kateri's remains, parish there just on the other side of the river from Montreal. Uh, We went to uh, 
Well, how did, Dame Cathedral there. It's incredible place. And what was what about your ride back then? Then we uh, rode to Ottawa, stopped and had brunch with the founders of CCO for the Americans. It's the equivalent to Focus. Yeah, uh, it's a university, but they've been around longer. They're they're in their thirty first year right now, so it was a very very neat to meet them. And then we rode on to Midland, Ontario, where is the home of the Canadian Martyr Shrine. Jeff like Jeff Cavins likes to call it the North American Martyrs, but uh, we take ownership up in Canada, mm. and uh, it it was extremely profound. Actually, it was so neat to be there with Jeff and the others to share that treasure with them of of these first martyrs in North America. So yeah. and then you and then you and then I and then did you then you headed back towards what Duluth yeah, or what? St. Marie, then we went to uh into Wisconsin to Tom's cabin, one of our guys that we ride with has a cabin in Wisconsin. And then we split off. I went to Minot north dakota the next night and then home so and then i think i bumped into jeff a, a couple of weeks or a week or so later down in minneapolis but there's something about this this long ride uh with other men uh there's something about brotherhood that men if you if you don't you can, can you can cultivate you need to cultivate friendships with real men men need other men to to uh uh go through life with you know i i, I have a group of men uh more here when I'm in Florida than when I'm in, in Hawaii even. I have a lot of friends in Hawaii, but there's a group of men here in Florida that I'm really tight with. You know, we, I know I, we have a group text all, all the time going, and we ask each other for prayer. We challenge each other to 60 minutes of push-ups. I mean, 60 minutes of cardio, 60 push-ups, 60 crunches of each day, and 60 minutes of prayer. You know, it's one of the things that we do, but we, we're there to challenge each other, equip each other, but we're more on the surfer side, right? We surf together quite a lot but you need to have brothers and you need, we need to cultivate brotherhood and that that came so apparent to me just in the we're talking very recently last two weeks so i was having a job moment i had uh, my daughter had lost her mother-in-law just before christmas christmas eve i went to visit a youth that i worked with for four years in the hospital who died hours later. Uh, we had some illnesses. My son totaled his car in Idaho there. And then uh, another youth that I had worked with for about four years trying to mentor was shot and killed. So wow. when I heard that on the news, driving into the high school parking lot, I was, I was having a job moment. I was struggling. And I was able to reach out to one of my buddies from the God Squad here. And you talk about texting. I, the pack that I ride with, I texted them. And to have Jeff Cabins and one of the guys was with them, they were in Jerusalem praying for me. I had a friend in, in Minnesota praying for me. I had a bishop praying for me. I had our Father Marius praying for me. So... To have all those men praying for me, I can't tell you what a difference that made to help me persevere through that Job moment. Well, so, tell me, because so, so you have a men's conference there in Canada. Tell us a little bit about how that started and... Are there men? Are there small men's group that have formed as a result of it? Tell me all about your men's conference. And by the way, I'm gonna every time I talk to you, I'm gonna say, please have me come speak sometime. I would love to love to be at your men's conference, just as an excuse to to have some barbecue. There but you tell, go. But tell me about your conference, the name of it. And by the way, I'm speaking in Regina, Regina, Kansas, uh, in September, to the group there. We're gonna call it the 300, uh, referring to the 300 Spartans and the 300 men of Gideon's army gathering. And you know what? They go, you, the first night we're going to have a barbecue. So they must have got, they must have learned something from you. That's all I can think of. It's Kevin Phillips over there. I think he must have learned something from Sean Lynn and his love for barbecuing. But tell me, tell me, we got a couple minutes here. Tell us how the conference got started there in Calgary. Well, it, it started uh, a good friend of mine, Steve Wood, 
had St. Joseph Covenant Keepers. Oh, and, yeah. I remember that group. So I got to know Steve. We hit it off uh, and have been friends. I just had breakfast with him here uh, a couple months ago in when I was down in South Carolina. And so we started as doing St. Joseph's Covenant Keepers conferences, and that's where I met Jeff and Steve had us down doing sh shows on his EWTN show, The Carpenter Shop. And that's when I, Jeff asked me to throw an arm wrestling rep, uh, match against Okay, him. I want to talk about that. So, I want to talk about that. You got a minute and a half to do this. Now, you, you arm wrestled. If yeah, you, guys could see show, you guys have got to watch the video version of this show, uh, Bear Wozniak YouTube channel. Dude, so you arm wrestled Jeff Cavins on national, international television. Yes, because at the time I was running the, I had just run the uh, World Police Fire Games arm wrestling competition here in Calgary. You, you had run it or won it? Run it. Unfortunately, run it. they because I was running it, they didn't let me compete. They were uh, intimidated. I had done well in arm wrestling. Uh, so we hit it off with Jeff. I had him up a couple times to speak at our But when, when was this arm wrestling event? And how did it, it was, you got well, one minute to tell me about it. Way back in 1998 on his show, Life on the Rock, we were all in our police uniforms. We were there to, Tim Gray was his, was his guest who was at that time. Get to the point young. about the arm wrestling. Now you got 40 seconds. Okay. He, he wanted to arm wrestle. He said, make it look good, and that he needed to win. That's my story. <laughs> He's got a different story, I know. But who am I? I was a young guy, 33 at the time. So you, you know, arm wrestled Jeff Cavins on international TV. Jeff's version lost. of it. The Jeff's yeah. version of it is that he destroyed you. Your version is that you were gallantly letting him win. Is that how it goes? That. That would be the polite way of saying it. Yes, yes. Well, we're going to talk about how when I arm wrestled him when we come back. When I when I arm wrestled, you were there. When I, I arm was wrestled, there. Uh, when I arm wrestled Jeff Cavins uh, this last summer. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. I told you we we're going to end up talking about Jeff Cavins. And, <laughs> you and, you were know, right. You I know. Were he's, absolutely I told right. he's going to have to put. He's going to have to build a room addition to his cabin, his remote, remote cabin, just so he has more room for his ego. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. We'll be right back. Good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to challenge you guys, encourage you guys, go to deepadventure.com and join Bear's Man Cave. It's a secret Facebook group. A lot of people make the mistake of going to Facebook and finding the Bear's Man Cave and trying to join it. You can't join it there. You have to join it at deepadventure.com. There's a little spot there. You'll see it. There's a big warning sign, stop, don't enter. That's the way you get into the man cave. Join us because there you can find a lot of other like-minded men who are we're basically all bozos on the same bus. We're, we're, none of us are perfect. We're all struggling, trying to serve the Lord in the best way we can and sharing and challenging, encouraging and mobilizing each other. So come to the man cave. We, uh, we, we post, we share, we pray, but we also have Zoom video chat meetups every two or three weeks. We're talking with Sean Lynn. He's one of the people that organized the uh, men's conference in Calgary. He's a biker. He's a cop. He's, he's, uh, his ministry is barbecuing. So you know why I'm having him on my show. But so, so explain to them. So you, you're saying you let, Sean, you let Jeff Cavins beat you on international global television, arm wrestling. That's my, my version of the story, yes. Okay. And so now, because every time I sit with Jeff and you, he brings this up for some reason. I don't know why. But now, in Lansing, Michigan, we're there with Ace Bagley and the Knights on Bikes. And I asked you guys to do me a favor. Do you remember what that favor was? To be models. To be models yeah. for my... <laughs> for, for, your, for your shirts. And we, we pulled it off <laughs> quite nicely, I'll, I'll say. Yeah, you, you did a runway walk for me. That, and I told right. Jeff I would arm wrestle him if he did that. But I don't think I did a good job of it because I let him win right away. 
yeah, you got you got to show a little bit more uh, struggle. Because, you got to struggle a little bit. Yeah, men men need to know that there is struggle in life. I, <laughs> I talk about coaching. It's not the coach that said, "Oh, Bear, you did your best. Go have a seat. Don't worry about it." It's the coach that says, "You've got a little more in you, son. You can do uh, you can do better." And that those are the coaches that men remember. And that's what we try to accomplish in our in our men's conferences. They they want to hear the message. They want to be challenged. They want to know that there is a just God, and they just don't want their ribs broken, as Steve Wood says, with their wife elbowing them, saying, "Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this?" <laughs> that's so, why there's no women allowed, right? That's right. It's a yeah. safe zone, and uh, <laughs> and then we. So there's local boys that I went to high school with that went on to play in the Calgary or the Canadian Football League, and they, after retirement, developed Italian sausages that we serve. So it's um, all the all the sausage you can eat for lunch, and there's Palumbo sausages. They're they're incredible. I've had most of my speakers say they're the best they've ever had. So we create an environment for men to feel safe and they want to be part of this and and that's what we've been doing this is our well when is it when is it when is it this year it's march 20th 21st and we've got a neighbor of yours uh, he's just outside of jacksonville florida john chick played for the jacksonville jaguars played the cfl teams he was the top defensive player in the league in canada so a man's man coming and we're going to have our very first female speaker this year, uh, Jane Adol. She's also out of Florida, Ave Maria Law School in Naples. She's a professor there, but she spent the last eight years working for the Vatican in Rome uh, as an international law expert. So, well, so it's a but Friday night barbecue. Friday night, all day Saturday. Okay. So, and how can they find? What's the name of the conference? How can they? Come. The God Squad Men's Conference, and it's godsquad.ca to register or find out more information. And we're also featuring this year that you can get Father Calloway's yeah. book, The Consecration to St. Joseph, which I'm really pumped about. I'm uh, sorry, I'm reading that same book, The Consecration to St. Joseph, Father Don Calloway. I'm reading it also. Doing my 33 I'm, days. I, I, we're going to do it starting on February 16th. I'll do it with uh, you. Starting February 16th, I'll do it with you. Let's let's text each other and Now, people okay. are listening to the show. It's a delayed we've re recording this early. But they may be hearing this after February 16th. Uh, and I'll do that with you. That's the beauty of the book is that it gives you different dates throughout the year to finish on different feast days cuz uh, we're finishing on the feast of St. Joseph March 19th, but there's Praise also God. the feast of St. Joseph the Worker which is May 1st, and then there's other feast days like the Holy Family. So you can start this anytime during the year uh, to get a closer relationship with St. Joseph. You know, I was, uh, I was, um, I'm also reading a book, The Theology of the Body and Mary. Yeah. And when they, when they are talking about, I think, I think it's Don, Father Don Calloway put that book together too. And it's more uh, theologically oriented, but it, um, if you're going to know who Mary is, you got to know who Joseph is too, and how, how profound. How profound uh, a, go ahead, Sean. I've tell had me a about close that relationship with Saint Joseph for for many, many years. Tell me fact. what you. What is it about Saint Joseph? Tell me. Tell us. Well, we've done a novena to Saint Joseph for every conference, every bike ride, everything that we have organized as God Squad. But Saint Joseph is that strong silent man that does the will of God. And that's what our goal is in life, is to do the will of God. And it's, it, he teaches you humili humility, because a lot of men struggle with that, right? They want to be noticed, they want to be... So he helps you accomplish your goals while teaching you how to be humble about it. Tell me more. You, 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 your walk with you, you, you've had a devotion to him for a long time. I want. Well, really, I really want to know more about this. He's a he's a provider. Like he provided for the Holy Family and raising eight kids on one kid income as a police officer. 
there's times where it's been tight and I've, I've gone to my buddy and said, Hey, St. Joseph, can you help? And you get a refund from the power company or something that you just doesn't, you don't expect. He has never, ever let me down. And he's also the protector of the Holy family. And that's a role that men can, can understand uh, looking after your family and emulate because you want to, you want to protect your family. And the one that I is recent, Joseph terror of demons. Like, yeah. T- about, tell me about that, dude. Te- Joseph, St. Joseph, ter- St. Joseph on- terror of demons. Tell me about that. Cause I've, I've also had a St. Michael. Uh, he's another buddy cause he's a patron of police officers, but terror of demons. It's, it's one of the titles that, St. Joseph has been get, given. I'm looking more into that. Uh, there's a station up at St. Joseph's Oratory in Montreal that has that title and that image there. It's 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 something that is is profound because the demons are afraid of him because of his protection. That's why he was named patron of the Universal Church. He's patron of Canada. He's patron of God Squad Canada. So he's got lots of roles. And these are recent history. Like he was forgotten for much of church history. It's only recent that he is become that go-to saint for the church. He was the role model with Jesus. I mean, he taught Jesus how to... Well, you know, the, the, biblically, the word isn't carpenter. It's technon. It means builder. And, if, you know, you've been to Israel... Yeah. Um, when you go there, you realize there's no trees. There's no houses made of wood. There's only no. one. The prime minister lives in it. More than likely, he might have done some work with wood, but he, but um, I'm for certain, if he was involved in building, he was working and moving heavy rock, cutting it, placing it. And, uh, you know, when you see the Shroud of Turin, the, the lifelike statue of Jesus in repose of the Shroud of Turin in Jerusalem, Jesus was muscular. He was he was strong, and you know Saint Joseph must have been pretty tough and pretty gritty. Oh, he, he and, was a, he was a man's man. Yeah, and, and he did it quietly. He he did it with honor. He did it with dignity because he was there to set the example for Jesus. Exactly. God the Father put him in place to be that that role model for Jesus. Think so about that. His human his human father. God the Father, and then God the Father chose Joseph as his human father to be the father there on earth with him. Talk about honor, and and that's why we need to honor him and get to know him. And and as you and I are growing a little older, another— What? What? Well, I'm I'm getting a little older, but— Better uh, looking, though. You're getting better looking, I I would say. There's a new statue—or old statuary, but new to us— opening in our, our shrine here in Canmore that we're looking to ride to this summer. And one of them is the happy death of Joseph. Joseph is the yes. patron of a good death. There's and that painting in, uh, in Notre Dame, University of Notre Dame, one of the chapels there. It's the chapel where you go to after the football game. I forget the name okay. of it. There's a painting of, jo- I think it's Joseph reclining in Jesus' arms as he's dying. Yeah, it's what it's, a beautiful, beautiful. I know, like intimate with, picture. With the Virgin Mary and Jesus at your side. Yeah, uh, die like. Well, that's a, and that's what you and I will have. We will have Joseph and Mary and Jesus with us when when that time comes for us. We've been talking with Sean Lynn. I just gotta ask the Lord sometime for let me to ride with, have a chance just to ride with you guys. You know, no cameras, just ride with you guys. I hope that 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 can come to pass. I certainly need to come and have a. I need to be participating in the God Squad barbecue sometime. We're talking with Sean Lynn, thirty-year policeman in Calgary, uh, Alberta, Canada, and a member of the God Squad. Or and he's one of the people that launches the God Squad annual conference there, and in, in usually March of, of each year in Calgary, and uh, puts up with the Jeff Cavins quite well. <laughs> they're they're in the God Squad motorcycle club together too. So until next week, this is Bear Wozniak. Sean, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Bear. Okay, till next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Hey, man. 
I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.